Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing, patreon.com slash real macro. So um, let's do a little bit of MMT stuff. And it's not necessarily about MMT, okay? Uh, they're, they're, they're a good way to kind of contrast real macroeconomics. And um, so um, let's get started, okay? And what I want to talk about in this video is how people are starting to catch on to what we've been saying as pure MMTers here for a long time. Now, Edward Delzu and I started pure MMT a few years back because we didn't want to um, mix politics with MMT, and we wanted to advance MMT because there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that are not correct about MMT. Okay, the description is off. You need to you need to make some additions, some amendments, and and kind of simplify everything. So we, we created Pure MMT for the 100% beyond the mains, and we started with, um, you know, stop saying that uh, uh, taxes don't fund government spending. That's, that's just simply wrong. And then from there, we, we continued on to um, uh, create the, well, Edward did. He did all the, the hard work, and a lot of the insights are Edward's. Uh, the 77 Deadly Innocent Misinterpretations of MMT. And uh, if you if you have not visited this site, this blog, and if you're really interested in understanding how the real macroeconomics works and the monetary system works, you got to come down here at uh, thenationaldebit.com. And if you come down to number 20, so there's a lot of them, um, and they're really, really great. And if you come down here to... Uh, Deadly Innocent Misinterpretation number 57, paying federal taxes does not, uh, has not been a destruction of dollars since 1957. What does that mean? Well, I have to explain it to you a little bit. Now, MMTers have, the, have this really bad habit of saying that taxes don't fund government spending. Okay, And Colin here points it out. If you're agreeing that taxes don't destroy money, then why do you keep saying that MMT is right? <laughs> I mean, the poor guy, he's, it's frustrating, okay? Because it's true. Why do you keep saying that? Taxes don't destroy money. And then you're saying, well, no, MMT is right. No, they're not. MMT is not right, okay? And here is where I kind of point out that surpluses don't necessarily mean destroying money. Destroying bonds is the key here. Okay, because how are dollars created? Okay, the government issues a bond, it borrows from the private sector, and then the bond expand. Okay, the money spent back into the private sector, it goes into savings, the savers buy the next bond. Okay, and what the actual printing that everybody talks about is actually a bond expansion. Okay, so uh, unless, unless Congress decides uh, to reduce the amount of bonds, then you cannot destroy your dollar. It's the opposite of what creates it. Okay, you need Congress to spend. You need uh, you need to issue bonds. Okay, uh, and that's a dollar creation. If you want to destroy a dollar, then you have to eliminate the bond. Okay, uh, by running surpluses and Congress deciding to eliminate the bond. So you'll hear MMTers often say, not often, all the time they say it. Oh, it's the Clinton surpluses that created the, the recession of 19, uh, whatever, uh, 1999, 2000, okay, the dot com. It was, it was yeah, it was uh, the surpluses. No, it wasn't, okay? Because if you look at the daily treasury statements, even though we ran surpluses, the amount of bonds increased did not decrease. So there was no dollar destruction. This is very important. There was actually a dollar expansion during the surplus. And that's why Edward correctly points out when he did the research that, hey, the last time that we destroyed a dollar was 1957. So, you know, again, Colin is saying it, we're saying it, we've been saying it, and it's nice to see Colin come on board because this is not something he was saying before, at least not something that I'm aware of that he was saying before. Uh, and, and slowly people are starting to catch on that the pure MMT way is the, 
the the correct way and colin also words it very nicely he says the the fact that you're taxing does not destroy liabilities okay it doesn't do it it doesn't destroy liabilities so you, you're not destroying the bond it's still a liability so you can't destroy a dollar you got to destroy the liability right so that's another uh, good way to understand it. Very, very well worded by Colin. So it's kind of maddening to sit here and, and listen to him in tears, you know, say, oh, you, this describes reality. Oh, you know, taxes don't fund government spending and so many other things that they say that it's like, no, that's not true. That's not. True. And it's like, no, no, it is. It is. And it's like, oh, anyway, so let's listen to this little conversation here. Um, it's quite long, but if you go to like the 30 minute mark and and listen to it. Um, I think you're going to find a lot of insight where Bill Mitchell starts saying that, hey, you know what? This is post MMT stuff. There's a lot of politics that's being, inv uh, that's being injected into MMT, which compromises MMT. Okay. Again, there's good things in MMT. doesn't mean that it's perfect and it doesn't mean it's complete. We've completed it. We've done the legwork. We've, we've finished it. Okay. But you, you, you got You guys have to follow along here in order to understand. You have to understand the 77 deadly uh, innocent misinterpretations of MMT and, and, and find out why, what's true and what's not true. So anyway, let's listen to uh, Bill Mitchell and Mosler have a little discussion here. The way I say it is, yes, spending comes first, but before taxes are paid, but tax liabilities come before spending because mm. you've got to create the jobs okay sorry to pause here <laughs> okay so tax liabilities come prior to spending why is that important to Mosler because under MMT the assumption is that the tax liabilities is what gives value to a currency that's not true okay that's not true at all and not even close First of all, the Middle East doesn't tax, okay? Everybody accepts the currency, okay? <laughs> so, so you can't make that claim. It, it, it defies reality. Two, go out in the middle of nowhere, impose a tax, okay? And then print a bunch of pieces of paper and tell me if that's going to create an economy. No, that's not what comes first. What comes first are productive economy real people okay producing consuming consuming producing okay that's that's what comes first that's what values a currency and that's why I always argue that if you want to debunk the fake MMT the prescription MMT all you have to, to 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 do is to understand that no government can just print value for a currency all right if the government could just print value for a currency, nobody would have to work. We'd all sit home and print up money, send it to my house, and we'll go out and, and spend it. But that's that, that's absurd. Okay? So what creates value for a currency? Hard work, blood, sweat, tear, risk-taking, entrepreneurship. Okay? That's what creates value for a currency. I buy the United States because they make Boeing 787s, Intel chips iPhones, uh, they have Google, they have Facebook, Amazon, they have huge companies, okay? Uh, pharmaceuticals, okay? What am I gonna, what am I buying when I go to Bangladesh? Cheap labor? What, what am I buying when I buy that currency? Why do I wanna hold that currency, right? So the fact that they tax, that's why I wanna go buy the Bangladesh? Dhaka? No. No, see, it doesn't make sense what they're saying. So the way Mosler is saying, well, you know, it's the tax liabilities that come first and then the spending comes. This is nonsense. This is this is this is the bad part about MMT. Again, I'm going to emphasize what comes first are real humans working blood, sweat, tears, entrepreneurship, innovation, risk taking. OK, that's what comes first. Not tax liabilities. That doesn't value a currency. Anyway, let's continue to uh, listen. You've got to create a need for the currency, the sellers of the yeah. currency first. So, so that's why we have the money story, which is different from everybody else's money story. 
people start with barter or whatever. And I'm not arguing about it. it might be, who cares? But right now, for a state currency like the dollar or the yen, which is what we're concerned about, we're concerned about you know policy today. The money story starts with a tax liability that creates sellers of goods and services, sellers of labor we call unemployed. So let's say it creates unemployment, yeah. which wouldn't exist without tax liabilities. For the further purpose of the government then can spend its otherwise worthless currency and then do stuff. And then taxes get paid. So that, there's a sequence. So tax liabilities come first and they drive the system that renders and that means that the currency itself is the tax credit. Yeah. Okay, so the dollar is just a tax credit. The yen's a tax I think we I think most people are saying that these days. Right, but they're not putting it first. Number one, the MMT is about the idea that the sequence is backwards. And here's the actual sequence as explained by MMT, which is our money story. When you st and if we start with that and point out that that is what distinguishes us from you know, A, so it's, it's one of the main distinctions between us and the other schools of thought, uh, which never went there. I mean, you never had um, Keynes talking about the government spends first and then collects. No. Okay, so you, you never had this in there. It's not in any mainstream model. Again, it's, it's painful to listen to it. That world government spends first. <laughs> no, the money is just a medium of exchange, okay? That's all it is. It's not value. I'm going to keep saying it. It's not value. You know, so, so how do we spend? Why is it that we can deficit spend? Well, the reason we can deficit spend is because we have $150 trillion in assets. That's why you're borrowing from the private sector. That's why we have bonds. You can't just arbitrarily go and put the, the Treasury and the Fed together and then, you know, you're going to replace the, the one percenters with politicians and then the politicians are just going to print, print, print money and give free stuff to everybody. And then somehow that's going to be valuable because we tax. That, that's not the way it works. God, it's, it's painful. And then he says taxes create unemployment. Oh, oh. Again, this is deadly innocent misinterpretation number 22. Taxes create unemployment. You can come and read that, please, please do. And then deadly innocent misinterpretation number 23. Taxes value a currency. Please come down and read this too. Okay, uh, it's 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 painful. Uh, I don't know how how else to to explain it. That it's not accurate. Anyway, let's continue. Okay, it's not in any new Keynesian model. It's not, they didn't have money in there, but it's not in any of their models, right? But once you do that, it, it transforms everything. So to me, that's the starting point. So I came up with this idea, okay, well, I'll come up with this white paper, for lack of a better idea, that to get this starting point where it is and to show the main distinction between MMT and... Um, other schools of thought and why it can properly be considered its own school of thought because of this alone. Because once you have a different starting point, everything else follows in a different way, right, with all kinds of connotations mm -hmm. and policy options. And it's never gotten anywhere. You know, and I look back, it started back in February of last year. And um, so when you talk about MMT, what did you call it? Post-MMT. Post-MMT. It's, it's a post -cat. There we go. Post-MMT now. What's happened is they've lost the notion of the sequence being where it all starts. Well, see, one of the problems. Along with other things. One <laughs> of the problems I think, and I've, yeah. I've written about this and I've said yeah. it at, at, at MMT conferences, is that in particular jurisdictions, and let's say America in this case, the body of work has become sort of tied up with a, with with political considerations yeah. and once you start doing that then and you you you're expressing it with a as a particular political agenda then there's all sorts of compromises start slipping in exactly yeah. and that's what I mean by post MMT all oh, these yeah. compromises are, are nothing to do with the core body of work right, right. Be, because the core body of work is seen by various people as being politically not sellable or what I don't know their motivation yeah and so you start getting statements that are attributed to MMT that aren't core, 
their political compromises. That's what I meant by post MMT. Yeah. You see that again? You know, he's right. Okay. Forget about the part that I don't agree with with some of the stuff of MMT. Forget about that part. But he's right. Okay. Why did we create pure MMT for the 100% beyond the memes? This is why. So we don't compromise <laughs> for political purposes. That's why, you know, but we got so much grief for that. It's Anyway, let's continue here. And I think that's a, that's a bit of a problem. Let me say something about the Green New Deal. You know, the, the first thing you have to determine, is this a positive or a negative productivity shock, right? Because if it's a negative productivity shock, it doesn't mean we can't afford to pay for it. It means we're going to see a drop in what we, how we have defined the standard of living. In yes. other sense, it may go up, but the way we've defined it in terms of consumption and material. In the current culture. It's yeah, yeah. So, if, you know, if it's a positive productivity shock, fine. But if it's not... There's a pretty severe real cost to this whole thing, and uh, a lot of pe MMT proponents have been unrealistic about that. It's like, oh, we're going to create millions of new jobs. Well, jobs are a cost; they're an input; they're yeah. not a benefit. You see, you see, oh, we're going to create millions of jobs, and we're going to, you know, th there's huge variations within MMT, and that's why it's very difficult to to convey the, 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 the proper pure MMT to these people because th there's so much variations and conflicting and it's, it's, it's like waves in, a, in an ocean just, you know, smacking up against each other and uh, going every which direction, you know. That's why you got to keep it pure. Just keep it to the description, the complete description, not the, the their version. The kind that applies in the real world. That's why it's called pure MMT, right? It's backed by math, facts, and data. I don't know. And, and so somehow this has gotten translated into a good thing. You know, oh, if we all want lawnmowers and we all cut the lawns with scissors, we're going to have all these new jobs. We'll all be better off. Well, you know? It's like negative productivity shock is a negative productivity shock. And, and the, thing yeah. the thing that they're saying, the thing, the thing that's been getting to me is that they, the, the job component of the massive transformation that we're going to have to make yeah. if we're going to deal with this these emergencies yeah, yeah. is being expressed as a job guarantee yeah and one of the things that I, and I'm going to talk in Sydney tomorrow yeah. that the job guarantee is a small part of it yeah it's a little buffer stock yeah. typically meant to be very small yeah what we're going to need is massive reskilling of people, high skilled people. So, as, as a purist, MMT purist, I'll call myself apolitical. <laughs> but apolitical MMT purist. Okay, there you go. <laughs> what, have we, what have we been saying? Right? Apolitical MMT purist. And this thing with the job guarantee, you know, if the government needs to hire people, then hire them. It's that simple. You don't need a job guarantee. Just let the government hire them. And as Bill said, you want a Green New Deal? Great, fine. Go out. Let's, let's make better infrastructure. Nobody's opposed to that. Okay? But you need high-skilled labor. You can't just arbitrarily at max employment like we are today, okay, 3.5% unemployment, 100 well, I'm 100. 1.3 million more jobs and people looking for jobs go out and say, well, I want a Green, green New Deal now. Where are you going to find it? Where are you going to find the high-skilled laborers? There's so much that can be good about MMT, you know, uh, and there's so much wrong with MMT. And uh, at least they're starting to get it. That's a positive, right? But... Um, I don't know. Hopefully, people are going to start coming around and start realizing it, and, and they'll start reading Edward's work. Um, and we'll get back to the description. We'll complete the description. Um, and uh, and I think it's going to be um, it's going to be a net positive for everybody, no matter where you are in the political spectrum. Um, 
it's going to make sense to you. And that's, again, the whole entire point of pure MMT for the 100%, right? That's the whole entire point. Math, facts, and data. There's nothing wrong with debating, okay? There is something wrong when people are saying, no, this is the way it is. Why? Because Moser said it, because Kelton said it, because no. You have to contrast what they say with reality. And when you're telling me that taxes are value of currency and the Middle East does not tax, but yet <laughs> everybody is, is accepting the currency and using the currency, then you can't say that, you know, we're all provisioning the government. And if we didn't all provision the government, if there wasn't, you know, a gun to our head uh, due to taxes, that nobody would use the currency uh, and so on. So... That's it for this video. Went on a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I think, you know, what Colin wrote was very good. Uh, again, read it. Take your time. Be open-minded about it. And uh, we hope to see you down at here at uh, Pure MMT. We need more Pure MMTers to start spreading the true description of MMT and uh, emphasize the good points about MMT um, and the get rid of the bad stuff. Okay, that's it. Take care. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.